This impression is based on a captain on board a U-57 U-boat nicknamed the Running Devil, which is more commonly known as U-552. Starting at the bottom left corner, I've got a spare shirt, a wool jumper. This one here was made famous by Daz Boot. As you can see, it's got the white uh, lining in the collar. And it's the in the film, it's actually the captain that wears it, so that's quite a nice jumper to have. A pair of workers overalls and a spare blanket, which a captain would have brought in his rucksack uh, just in case, you know, for extra warmth. Moving on up, I've got an original clothing bag or clothes bag. And basically in here, the, the captain would have carried his personal effects and his uh, clothing items, like a spare shirts, underwear, socks, and so on. Right here, I've got a few original stuff displayed on it. Got this beautiful, period correct, original camera. Uh, the captain would obviously, you know, take photos, you know, to document things and, and so on. I've got a pair of original uh, goggles. Now, these were used uh, specifically on U-boats because when you were to the surface um, and you would open the top hatch, you would let in a lot of uh, light. And the, in a U-boat, it's such a dark environment, so that would put a lot of strain on your eyes. And these were basically there just to tint the light out, uh, so your eyes didn't strain as much. And it's to protect your eyesight, so these are very important. And this pair is real. these pair of goggles are really hard to get nowadays. Beside that, I've got an original harmonica. Sewing kit, for obvious reasons. And below that I've got a part of a board game, which again he would have brought on, you know, just to fill up some spare time. Got spare suspenders, and beside that I've got an array of utensils. Um, these here are original. You can see the, the beautiful markings on that. And basically the, he would have brought on stuff like this from home or from the barks, really just to, you know, make things feel like home. I uh, obviously got a cork opener, can opener and so on. Moving on up, you've got his main tunic. This here is the reproduction tunic. On top of that, I've got this, again, beautiful original visor cup. Uh, these are made by Irel, which was actually a, a, a cap manufacturer during the war, um, but it's been weathered by war hats. And you can see the, the album on the side there, which is the album of the, the running devil, which is you know iconic for U-552. There's not much pockets on these tunics, or not many pockets, I should say. Um, but he would have carried his wallet, which of course would have had, you know, photos, um, money and so on, which, you know, obviously wouldn't be as useful on a U-boat. He's got a spare matches. These are uh, period matches. And of course, a mirror and a comb. Beside that, we've got quite a special piece of equipment. It's a reproduction uh, life preserver made by World War One One Us on Facebook. Unfortunately, I would have had an original life vest here with us today, uh, but but it got destroyed in the posts. So um, that's a story for another time. But yeah, highly recommend these if you want to do an impression like this uh, and a little waffle impression as well. Below that, I've got a, a pair of post-war uh, leather trousers. And these are pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to the originals. Of course, originals are very expensive and very hard to get nowadays. So I was quite lucky when I found a pair of these. On top of that, I've got a, a, wash, a wash bag with just generic uh, washing and hygiene stuff. I've got an original toothbrush with an original plastic box. Um, a box for a toothpaste, shaving uh, brush, and some hair clippers. Obviously on a U-boat, um, if you've seen the photos, a lot of guys grew out their beards and hair. But uh, sometimes for hy hygienic reasons, you'd want to cut their beards. So this is pretty, uh, you know, common tool you would have seen on U-boots. A soap box, um, spare razor, and a cut through um, razor. This again is the original, uh, made by Puma. And it's got its cardboard box there as well. Of course, below that. I've got a pair of jackboots. Um, I'm still unsure whether they were issued jackboots or were they issued a, a specific type of jackboots, possibly with a leather sole or rubber sole. Um, but that is still, I'm still unsure about that. 
Uh, if anyone knows, please uh, comment below. Moving back up again, I've got my original M40 helmet. I remember watching footage of uh, they were exploring a wreck of a U-boat that sank the English Channel, and um, you can see they had racks just full of helmets. And it, it's a pretty obvious reason why, because if you're on, if you've surfaced and you're manning the guns and there's a aircraft attack, you know you'd, you'd want to be prepared for that. Over beside it, beautiful example of an issued um, leather jacket. Um, I, I'm so chuffed to have one of these in my collection because they're increasingly getting really rare now. Um, and as you can see, it's a, a salty example, so it was definitely issued. And in the pockets, on his very top pocket, I've got another spare goggles, which again, for the same reason, to stop straining your eyes. A pocket watch to keep the time, which is again, very important. A wooden ruler, spare pencils and a sharpener. You know, for map work and so on. Um, and then in the lower pockets, he would have kept his, um, you know, smoking stuff, like his pipe, um, tobacco tin, and again, of course, uh, matches, which probably didn't really survive that long in U-boats, to be honest, because of the, the um, damp environment. Uh, but again, these are original. Moving on down, I've got a reproduction file weather cap, as the name suggests, used for file weather um, outside of the U-boat. Below the cap I've got an original um, duffel bag if you like. As you can see we've got the the guy's name and what I presume his um, you know number or the number of his U-boat I'm not exactly sure but as you can see it's an original used example and I believe the date inside is 1937. And then below, I've got, of course, a few uh, spare shirts and a jumper. Because the environment inside a, a, a U-boat was so warm and, you know, the humidity and everything, you'd get very sweaty very quickly. So, of course, for hygienic reasons, you'd want spare shirts to change into. I wanted to look a bit closer into this beautiful original jacket. As you can see, it's been heavily used and it's still, you know, quite strong for being 80 or so years old. You can see it still has all of its original curtain ring buttons. It has its liner still intact. Uh, obviously there's a bit of moth damage, but that's, you know, what do you expect for an 80 year old jacket that, that's been constantly exposed to, you know, awful, you know, elements. And it's got a few, um, what I believe are glass buttons inside. It's got a collar hook at the top. And of course, outside you've got four, oh sorry, three external pockets. And then on the sleeves, you've got uh, cuff adjustments, which again have the original Krug's wing buttons. Stuff like this, you know, has so much history attached onto it. Up next, I've got this life preserver, which I was speaking about earlier. This one, again, was made by World War One One Offs on Facebook. Um, he's a, a recent manufacturer of, um, you know, as the name suggests, one-off pieces of equipment. And he started making these uh, vests, I think a year ago. And I'm actually surprised at how well they're constructed. The material from, you know, saying original ones is spot on. Um, obviously the hardware is not, you know, it's not functional and, you know, it's not original. Um, but it, it still, it looks good and the weight to it as well is there. And one day I would love to get an original one. Uh, but again, like everything else, they're going up in price. U-boat crews, they used, you know, the standard Creek's Ring life jacket. But you also see a lot of them with this jacket as well. I don't really know the story behind it. If they were issued them specifically for, you know, different reasons. Um, but it is what it is. Lastly, we've got this original duffel bag. As mentioned earlier, it's got the, the, the original guy's name and what I presume is his service number. Inside, as you can see, it is quite a big bag. Um, and inside you've got a flap at the very top. And you can just about see the uh, manufacturer uh, stamp above the year, which is actually 1938 instead of 1937. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty nice bit of uh, pre-war history. At the back, ugh, it's got two straps. 
which would go over your shoulder. If you, if you have a look at the original Luftwaffe rucksacks, you can see that the straps are designed in a similar way. One side has a hook which stays on and the other side just has a leather strap. So basically you can just sling it on one shoulder um, you know, as conveniently as you, you would like. The, uh, the leather is still slightly you know, hardened, but that's, you know, that's what you would expect for something that's or the, you know, 80 years old. At the top you would have, a, of course, a drawstring, which would go through these eyelets, uh, but that, that's been missing. Um, it's probably been taken off at some point in time. Well, that wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below, and I'll try my best to respond to all of you. If you want more content like this, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thank you very much guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.